words, Julian, again, most welcome to Stockholm, and the floor is yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so the floor is mine, but what about the, the screen? Why will you wait for that? Um, so I'm very, very, very happy to be here. Um, you know, only last week, uh, the Pentagon spent 25 minutes issuing a series of demands to this organization. One of those demands was that we destroy our archives of classified information relating to the Pentagon. The second demand was that we destroy all future publications relating to the Pentagon and classified information uh, from the US government. And the third demand was that we stop dealing with US military whistleblowers. If we did not follow those demands, then we would be coerced into following those demands. And the Pentagon, when asked through what mechanism or what power it could engage in that coercion, said that it was the Department of Defense and issues as to legalities were not of its concern. Subsequently, there has, and in fact before that moment, there has been um, intelligence to intelligence contact between the Pentagon and Australia, and we uh, can assume, and, and there are uh, other, other reporters have stated, although it's not my first-hand knowledge, that there are intelligence and diplomatic efforts being made uh, to interfere with our organization in different countries. Um, and so it was with some relief uh, that I accepted this invitation to come here to Sweden, where we've had long support over many years um, and where our principal publishing operations occur from. While we have also received strong support in the United Kingdom uh, from organizations such as The Guardian and um, many other groups, there, there is no doubt that there is a history of uh, collaboration between uh, the various services of that country um, and the, the United States. Are we going? Okay. So I don't. How are these mics working? Is it right? It's two minutes break from the hour. You're doing it? This is not Macintosh contact. All right. Well, <coughs> okay. I can add lib. Do you have a good signal out? Looks like it. Um, okay, so Philip Knightley, whose uh, statement Peter uh, just quoted, said that a truth is the first casualty of war. But it is, it is journalism that is not only the first casualty of war, but it is the casualties occurring in journalism that cause wars and keep them going and maintain them. And that, have some, that is something that we have seen not just in this most recent uh, release of 92,000 classified uh, documents pertaining to the war in Afghanistan, but something that we have seen for many years uh, where we have released the policies behind media manipulation, uh, principally 
uh, in the West, which is more sophisticated in these matters. Yeah. And sometimes the detail of that manipulation that is occurring. So back in 2009, we got hold of the NATO's, of NATO's master narrative for Afghanistan. Now it may surprise some of you to think that there is a master narrative for Afghanistan held by NATO. Well there is, and we obtained the uh, document detailing that narrative, in fact part of a collection of a number of similar materials in encrypted form and we set about trying to break the code to it and this was a rel relatively easy decryption process the code word uh, was in the dictionary and NATO in a desire to be ever on target with its story to itself um, had set the password to be progress And, um, well, that's, uh, we have a picture that we used, which was also leaked, um, of a ISAF soldier in Afghanistan posing with a dead Afghani. Now, we're not, we're not sure of the precise circumstances. It does look like a trophy shop, uh, of which there are many of these sorts of things. So that's the part of the reality. And... This document is in part what you expect and what you've heard about because it is what you're hearing about. It is what the public spokespeople for that organization are telling the press every day. And their instructions on how to handle the press you are seeing. But you may not realize that behind the scenes this is well mapped out um, and coordinated. And even within NATO itself, which is a fairly disparate organization, so it's hard to keep things uh, secret at a sort of uh, at, the, at the media level, um, there are instructions to keep some things secret. There are instructions, as an example, to keep the fact that Jordan <coughs> is an ISAF partner in the war in Afghanistan secret. So this is the, a most extraordinary thing, that Sweden is a partner in ISAF, many other countries are a partner in ISAF, and yet the public of Sweden is not to know that Jordan is a partner in the war that is occurring in Afghanistan. Is that an acceptable way for NATO to behave not only to the rest of the world but an acceptable way for NATO to treat its own domestic populations. So you can see where this sort of thing is coming from. It comes from a desire by Jordan to keep the truth from its population. So we see the lie starts to spread for domestic reasons Jordan, as an Islamic country, doesn't want to be seen to be a U.S. puppet pushing troops into Afghanistan. And of course, it is the strongest, arguably the strongest um, or, or <coughs> most supportive um, uh, Muslim nation in, in the Middle East towards the United States, uh, a favorite place uh, to, uh, historically a favorite place to conduct rendition operations. Uh, but, of course, it doesn't want to tell its people that it has sent troops into Afghanistan. And so that lie then spreads uh, to NATO countries and ISAF countries who are then instructed to conceal that Jordan is an active participant in this coalition. Subsequent uh, to the initial release of, 
um, the Afghan war diaries. I'm hope he, I hope everyone here is educated about this, otherwise I'll be um, saying things you don't understand. But how many people here uh, know that there were 92,000 documents released other than the fact that I just said it? Okay. So you have a, a feeling for this. Um, and I, I should say, uh, the feeling that other people have, um, and an interesting difference in perception versus reality. So the Pew Research Center uh, in the United States, a conservative media research body, polled 1,000 people at the end of the week um, when we and the New York Times and Guardian der Spiegel uh, released the news about this archive. That poll revealed that it was the most uh, spoken about story uh, of that week. Um, it had greater uh, public recognition than, Hillary, than uh, Chelsea Clinton's wedding, which I think is an incredibly optimistic sign, and that some 30% of people wanted uh, there to be more information about it, that it felt the media had, uh, had underreported. Interestingly, 6% uh, felt that Chelsea Clinton's wedding had been underreported. Um, but that the total news volume, uh, the total war reporting in the United States for that week increased 300 per cent from, well, have a guess. What do you think the average news reporting about war is in the United States? So it's 6 per cent. Um, although there's this extraordinary war in um, two of them, um, there's only 6 per cent of the of the news is about these wars. But anyway, for that week it increased to 18%. Uh, and 50% uh, of the population uh, stated um, that they believed that the release of this information was in the public interest. Uh, in fact, the, the, the release of classified information was in the public interest, which if you know US media is um, was well, a surprise to me. I thought it would have been about 15 to 20 percent because um, classified information and patriotism uh, seem to be written you know, in the same font and on the same page uh, when you read the press. But actually, when you go to the people, it seems that the majority of people under the age of 50 believe that it is correct to release classified information under those circumstances, uh, and the slight majority uh, over the age of 50 believe the opposite. Um, so I see that as a very interesting outcome. Another fact from that study is that the um, support for the, the war dropped about 30% uh, in the US population. Now, of course, that will um, possibly uh, swing around a bit, but there's no doubt uh, that the release of this true information uh, compared to the opinion and editorial uh, that had been crowding uh, the American uh, media uh, has changed uh, people's perceptions about what is going on in Afghanistan. Okay, so subsequent to the release, we've enhanced the sort of ways of, of understanding this material. Now, it's, it is not just censorship um, uh, and containment and threats of legal action and classifications that keep important information about war away from the politics and away from journalists. It is also the complexity and the acronyms and other details and uh, in the case where you have 91,000 reports, simply the sheer amount of information, which information is, is important. Um, it can be quite hard to find. So we now have this really quite impressive interface that was done with the help of uh, graduate students at, at the Minnesota Institute of Technology. And you can see this on diarydig.org. And you'll be able to um, search for any keyword, um, unit names, uh, and um, you can uh, have other limitations made by the number of people killed and so on. This is an example of the top kill report. 